Hi, Global Family. It is great joy for me to come and share the love of Jesus with you every Sunday through online offline worship service. We started to start a new series, Good News. What is good news? Previous Sunday, we learned that we are created in God's own image to love God and to be loved by Him. Now, this is one of the greatest news we should know concerning our identity. We are created in His own image to reign in God's created world as His representatives. But something went wrong since sin came to the world. Sin brought us the brokenness in every area of our relationships. But God's redemptive history starts from the beginning in Genesis through preparing the garment of skin to cover their shame. Now, this is the picture of how God would deliver people from their sins. Today, we also can see God's way of deliverance in the perverted and crooked generation. Now, this is what we want to study today, the grace for all sinners. Before we look at the Word of God, I want to start this time with this question. Have you ever received a great favor from someone in your life? Just to think about it. When I was in Australia, young people came to work with us from Korea, Japan, and America for one or two years mission internship program. They got some mission training and were involved in various ministries to reach out to people from all nations and to share the gospel with the international students at Macquarie University. They also got involved in the multi-ethnic church plantings as well. They worked with me in training and ministry together, so they had a Monday off. Until Sunday, they were busy doing ministries, so they used to take a rest on Monday, playing and swimming in the ocean. On the particular Monday afternoon, it was a so hot summer season. Four brothers in our team went swimming at Bondi Beach, which is one of the famous ones in Sydney. It was late afternoon. Not many people were swimming in the water. While they enjoyed swimming, all of a sudden a big wave hit them and took one of the brothers into the deep water. He was the youngest one in our team, but could not swim. Struggling to get out of the water and shouting for help in the middle of drowning. One of the brothers saw him drowning and bravely jumped in the water to push him out. But unfortunately, he couldn't swim well either, regardless of his courage. He tried to push him out of the water, but it was beyond his power. Now the second brother also was drowning and shouting for help. To make the story worse, the third brother jumped in again, even though he, he was uh, uh, pretty good at swimming. Another big wave hit them again, and all of them were swept away at the risk of death. When an American brother saw things that happened suddenly, he began to pray to God, ah, God, please help, help us, I don't know what to do. And he just cried out to God. At the very moment, he saw two young Aussie brothers on surfing board coming out of the water. Then he shouted out for help. Please come over here. People are drowning. Come and help. Unfortunately, uh, not this fortunately, uh, two Aussie boys heard the sound and quickly came to pick them up on the surfing board. They were all rescued. Hallelujah. As soon as they came out of the water, they came back to life through CPR. These three brothers were saved from death. When they came back to life, they gave thanks to God and bowed down several times to these two Aussie young men with thanks and tears. What might be a great favor for you to receive anything then receive life again from death. The same story you can see in the Bible today. Let us look at the Word of God from Genesis. Genesis chapter 6, verse from 5 to 8. 
Look at your Bible. I will read for you. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found the fable in the eyes of the Lord. This is the word of God given to us for Global Family Church today. Is there a flood story in the Asian literature of your culture? In Asian literature, from many world cultures, there are stories of massive flood and people who survived it. These stories have many similarities. Is this a coincidence? Beyond the Bible, stories of massive flood are found in the Quran and the Babylonian epic of Kilgamesh. A 6th century BC Indian myth tells of Manu, a hero advised by a fish to build a ship to escape a flood. Anyway, we can see such a hint even in the Chinese word for flood and ship. Look at this word, the flood, Chinese word, and two words are divided, the water and together. When you analyze the word together, you can see number eight and being united, the two persons holding together, you can see, and the flat, which means earth. So it means, flood means, and eight people holding together unity against the water. Pretty interesting. And next word, the ship. Ship, you can see vessel, look like a vessel, the ship, and eight, number eight, and mouth. So eight people on board. Last word in history, keep going, which means, uh, you know, well, you can see here, uh, water and eight mouth, which means in history, keeps going on with eight people with water. Pretty interesting. And all three words, you can see one common thing. What is that? Number eight. Eight people. All these Chinese words tell us that only eight people were saved from the flood. And eight people in the ship. And from eight people, human history continued. When I ask Chinese people about why eight people are something to do with the flood, the ship, and history, they don't know anything about the history. Then I began to open the Bible and share the good news from Noah's story. Before we talk about the good news, we need to understand the bad news first. The Bible tells us how simple men provoked God's grief and anger. Why was God so grieved? Look at verse 5 again. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. God was grieved and decided to wipe out mankind. Why? Verse 5 says, Every inclination of the thought of his heart was only evil all the time. You can see, every, only, all the time. Now, this is a human condition. Since we sin against God, we are created to have a fellowship with God. However, we not only with the Satan, the devil, rebelled against God, but also we made him grieved. So God decided to destroy both all people and living creatures on earth by waters. Even after the flood and people are afraid of God and try to build the city and make a name for themselves. Because of this, in human history, we have a constant wars and conflict around the world even today. What causes divisions and strife between all people in the world? Look at Genesis chapter 11, verse 4. They said to, the, to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. 
even though they experience God's judgment through the flood, the pride of a sinful humanity try to reach heaven. People in this world want to be kings over other nations and other people. Now, this is the reason why we have a constant wars and conflict between nations and people. Look around the world. People continue to challenge God by their wisdom and knowledge through DNA manipulations today, and they try to cross the boundary of God's realm. You know, this is a human pride that makes God grieved. Human pride, sin, and wickedness cause divisions and strife between all peoples even today. Human sin, pride, and wickedness brought brokenness in every area of God's world. That's why we all are under the God's wrath. The Bible tells us that the people were judged by water in the beginning, but in the last days, the whole world will be judged by fire. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. By these waters also the word of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for what? For fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. The present heaven and earth are reserved for fire. In the beginning, the whole world was charged by waters, but in future, this whole world will be charged by fire. Then this might be the last question you may have. Pastor Anton, who can be saved from the wrath of God in this wicked generation? Who can be saved? Look at verse 8 again. But Noah found the fable in the eyes of the Lord. I want you to focus on the preposition, but, here. God was grieved by the wickedness, sin, and pride of man. So he decided to wipe them out from the face of the earth. But Noah found, in the, found the favor in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, this is the grace of God. This is the favor of God to the undeserving sinners. What does grace mean? You don't deserve to receive a special favor from somebody, but it is given to you freely without any condition. You know, this is the grace of God given to all sinners. Look at the Noah's family. But Noah found God's favor in the eyes of the Lord. It is hard to understand the grace of God, but it is the free gift given to the undeserving sinners without condition. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Grace is first, not faith. Grace is the gift of God, Noah didn't do anything to be saved. But it is God who gave him and his family special favor. It is beyond our understanding. To understand God's grace well, we need to understand the character of God in a big picture. I'm going to share more about this subject next Sunday, though. Now, one thing is sure that God's grace was revealed to save sinners from eternal destruction. God commanded Noah to prepare a ship to enter. What does this ship symbolize? I believe that during the time Noah was building the ship, he proclaimed the warnings of God's judgment and inviting them to enter the ship. What does this ship, Noah's ark, symbolize? It is the ark of salvation that refers to Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As I conclude the message today, you know, Jesus is the ark of salvation. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible tells us that the result of sin is death. That's why we all will die one day. Drowning three young men could not save themselves. Rescue people came to save them from the deadly situation. 
in the same way, God sent Jesus Christ to save us from eternal death and eternal destruction. Jesus is the gift of God given to us as the ark of salvation today. Amen. All you can do is to receive this gift in faith. But even this faith does not come from yourself. God's grace enables us to understand our spiritual condition and the way of God's salvation. Amen. If you understand this truth and believe in Christ, this is God's grace revealed to you. This gift is given freely to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for this word given to us today and help us to understand the way of deliverance from eternal destruction. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came first to save us as a, a rescue mission. I want to thank you so much, Father, for the grace given to us to all sinners and continue to open our spiritual eyes to understand big picture of God's deliverance throughout the Bible. And even as we learn today, Lord Jesus, we want to go into the Word and invite people into the Ark of Salvation so that they may enjoy God's salvation together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.